Well, as we are getting to the middle of the month of April, how is that weather situation shaping up across the U.S. as farmers are wanting to get out in the field and get more spring planting done, more spring field work done? Let's get caught up on the latest and have a conversation with Eric Stodgrass from Nutrien Ag Solutions. He joins us for our weekly weather update. And Eric, good to catch up with you again. And as we looked at last week, obviously we got past all the immense rainfall and flooding. We're still drying out in parts of the Mid-South and more. But it felt like last week was a quieter week overall. But it sounds like, especially later this week, that's not going to be the case again, Eric. Yeah, we, we've kind of been on this, I, don't, I just call it week on, week off, right? And so this recent weekend was kind of a week off. We had a system that came through the weekend across the northern tier of the United States and one exited east. But for most of the country, it was not just drier, but it was also quite warmer. Now, something to think about, the Mississippi River at Memphis, which is where the water from all of the tributaries in the mid-south kind of come together. Um, you know, we watched that river depth increase 30 plus feet just since the previous heavy rainfall event until now. Uh, so this is an incredible amount of water that the Mid-South is trying to drain. So this drier weekend was quite nice for a lot of that area. Now, unfortunately, we do have a little bit of moisture coming into that area. But before we get into this, just to mention something here, uh, the warm up we saw on Sunday was incredible for a lot of places. We were deep into the 90s in Texas, 90s in Oklahoma, upper 80s in parts of Kansas, Missouri, even Western Illinois got quite hot. And it's got a lot of folks just going, all right, is it go time, right? Is, 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 are we just out of the woods? Is there no more frost risk? Are we just going to blow the doors open? And so it just gets me thinking a lot about frost and something to consider here. If you just bring up that graphic, Jesse, mm -hmm. is that when you look um, at our historical chances of having a frost after today, uh, this is a, I, I have a 109,000 city database. I kind of do weather data collection on. And what you're looking at here is just showing that in, you know, you can see the 50 to 70% color range. I mean, if you look, there's a lot of Nebraska, Southern Iowa, Missouri, even Kansas, Central Illinois, Indiana, where historically, well, 60 to 70% of the time, the last frost is after today. When you get up into Northern Iowa, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Northern Illinois, Northern, it's, it's 90 to hundred percent. So in other words, I'm just telling folks that while the forecast upcoming is warm, we have these sharp drops off drop offs in temperature behind the fronts that are going to come through with the severe weather. And so we're not yet out of the woods for a lot of the central and Northern Corn Belt on, on our frost threat, but uh, picking it up, forecasting it, you know, we're, we're good at that about six, seven days out. So we'll just need to keep watching that very carefully as we go forward because these soil temps across much of the Midwest, they're not like consistently above 50 degrees just yet, which has got some folks just being patient and that's okay. Um, we just have some time going forward. So yeah, something and, to out there. Yeah, and I'm glad you brought that up because as we look at the calendar, I know we're in the middle of the month of April, but we still have time, Eric, to get those soil temps consistently above that 50 degree mark and then as obviously as we're looking at this risk of frost potential here after you know the middle of the month here yeah. it, it is something to to note because i i think every agronomist i've ever talked to says that you want to see those soil temps consistently above 50 yeah. before you really start planting across the midwest yeah the other problem is you know we still have I, i'm be honest with you the, the end of april i mean the second half of april um, and then getting into early May looks extremely active. So we, we have this competing issue, right? I, I, the super tight windows due to uh, the rainfall that's coming up. And then you have this thought like, man, it just got so warm if I got in and went after it. But if if we have a cool down and we have some seed in the ground and it's wet and cold, you know, I, I'm, I'm not a seed scientist. I'm not a soil scientist and I'm certainly not an agronomist, but I talk to those guys all the time. And they always tell me something. What is it? Uh, you don't You don't want your seed and wet cold feet to start or something like that mm -hmm. i just want to be cautious with this pattern because um, it does look warm but i still think we have sharp drops in temperature behind this now coming back to the wet side of this as we work our way toward easter weekend we're going to be planting a big ridge over the southeast and if you just think about this that big ridge over the southeast opens up the gulf to moisture transport to the central u.s if you have a ridge in the southeast that means your flow is going to go from like arizona to maine when you get flow going in that direction, it makes things extremely wet. And it's going to be the same areas that got hit recently that we're expecting to go back over very active again. 
So unfortunately, this is where I mentioned the window's getting tight. Now, something interesting, Jesse, is going to happen. We have Easter Sunday coming up at the end of this week, mm -hmm. the beginning of next week. And already Thursday, Friday, we have the risk of severe storms coming up again, first in Iowa, then more from like, I mean, it could be Michigan to Texas as we get into Good Friday. And the storm system that's coming through there late this week is going to make things quite wet. Um, so, you know, that that saying, right? If it rains on Easter, you got rain every Sunday or once a week for the next seven weeks or something like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's, um, you know, a guarantee, but it, yeah. it, it makes sense only because Easter's in spring. So we typically get a cadence of systems about once every week. Uh, but the reality is, is question, folks are going to ask, is this going to beat back the risk of drought? I mean, are we going to start to shrink this area of risk up? And I just want to remind everybody of something. The hydrologic cycle is fast. Okay. So what that means is we can still have events in spring that come through and recharge soil moisture, uh, especially across big acres or continue flooding in other places. But what I want to remind people is that when you get into June and July, the atmosphere can still lose all of its momentum despite a really good spring and we could build ourselves into a drought scenario, which is something we're still thinking about for this upcoming year. Now, that's not a grand slam forecast, but I do expect to see a lot of severe weather as we finish this month of April and start May. And that's climatologically consistent with this time of year. We're already way above average on severe weather, though, Jesse. Uh, we're at about 180% of normal on tornadoes. We're about average on hail, but we're more than double. In fact, we're 230% of normal so far this year on wind reports. So we just have to think about what that could mean going into the rest of the spring with active severe weather, tight planting windows, uh, and what that means for later in the summer. So all of this is still ahead of us. Very true. Well, and I just want to take a quick brief look at the latest U.S. Drought Monitor map, which, you know, you mentioned Iowa in there. I know that a lot of farmers in the Hawkeye State are a bit concerned with how dry it has been throughout the winter months and more. And, you know, you still see parts of the uh, Western Corn Belt, the Central Plains, the Northern Plains, et cetera, that are still showing some fairly sizable drought as we head into the heart of planting season, Eric. Yeah, you know, we're, we're somewhere around 40, 45% of the lower 48 in D1 to D4, and that's more than double what it was a year ago. Remember, a year ago, we were talking about how incredibly wet May and early June was going to be for the Western Corn Belt, which had its own set of problems. There's still some subsurface soil moisture issues, although you can say a lot of Iowa has gotten some good moisture this you know spring time frame. They're looking pretty good going forward. Mm -hmm. But as you look at the pattern coming up, um, much of Kansas, Nebraska, South Dakota is going to be left out of this wet conditions. The wetter conditions are going to be in Oklahoma, Arkansas, Mid-South, Eastern Corn Belt, Central Corn Belt, uh, rather than the West. And so we just want to know where drought still is established once we get fully past spring and start to just get into convection season, which is where we're not talking about front spring in precip, we're just talking about thunderstorm activity. And there's just always big questions when you have a fading La Nina, which we are out of. We're down to neutral conditions. And we know that there is the potential, given the longer term cyclical behavior of the North Pacific, for there to be some cold water that shows up there when the atmosphere loses momentum in midsummer. So all of that is still kind of a, you know, a part of this global risk package with respect to hitting you know, these key acres. And I hate to say this, Jesse, but it would have been nice if we could have timed this kind of information with some sort of an issue out of Brazil, right? That some sort of supply side thing that could happen. But I just looked this morning at the NDVI values for all Brazilian states. It's the highest it's been since 2001. So in other words, from satellite, the crop, the Safrina crop looks pretty good. There's some drought issues in Argentina. Maybe parts of Southern Brazil are going to be drier. The Amazon's a bit drier, but everything in between, which is where we go crops, you know, doesn't look too bad. So I don't really have a uh, much of a, of a bullish story coming out of South America, which we thought we could be seeing at this time of, of the year, but it's just not there. Eric, anything final around the world or here at home you're tracking this week on the weather side? You know, I, I think the other thing just to think about here is we did get the new hurricane season forecast for 2025 from Colorado State University. I personally find them to be one of the best, and their new forecast is for an above average season. Again, uh, no reason to give it any more detail than that. But what is interesting is that the analog years that they used were 96, 98, 2006, 2008, and 2017. There is reason to believe that you could toss in 2011 
in 2012 and 2021 into the mix as well. And some of those years were not um, great years for the Midwest, Mm -hmm. but had an active hurricane season with a lot of what we call homegrown hurricanes. Those are the ones that just start right off the coast. So I'll keep an eye on all of that, and we'll just keep chatting about it for the next nine months as we try to grow a crop in the United States. So that's what's ahead of us. Absolutely. Well, I know folks can stay up to date as well online at agweather.com, ag-wx.com. Eric Snodgrass, Nutrient Ag Solutions. Always appreciate it. Thanks for joining us. We'll talk to you next week. Yeah, take care, Jesse.